هو نفسه عمل داونلود للفيديو وسار فينش اند هي فاوند ذات ذا بيك اوف ذا فينش از ديفرنت فروم ون ايلاند تو انذر ايلاند ديبيندينغ اون ذا تايب اوف فود افيلبل سو هي ستارتد تو سي ذات ذا نيتشر كان سيلكت the uh, the uh, animal or the bird that can live in these particular circumstances and he started to write two main books he wrote lots of other things but the two main books were origin of species and then the descent of man and he imagined that we all came from a common ancestor and this ancestor uh, branched into plants animals and humans and he built his theory in two big pillars one is the natural selection number two mutation he didn't understand mutation and genetics because genetics came back later by mendel who really established the basis of genetics so he was concentrating on the natural selection and we studied natural selection two lectures ago and we discovered natural selection is not a creative power it is a distributing power it can select the animal that can live in special circumstances excuse me but it cannot create this animal to start with and i advise you really to go back to two lectures before and study the natural selection in detail because we covered that in in full lecture and i like you to understand natural selection well natural selection as i said is not a creative power it is a distribution distributing power then last week we studied the um, the mutation excuse me and mutation is a copy mistake copying mistakes it will not produce uh, uh, something functioning at all and mutations are random so there is no structure to it so in order to to have a change in organ you need change in the coding mechanism which is the dna so that means the random mutations will happen and if it is beneficial you have to keep it for the next generation you have to function and this is uh, uh, impossible mathematically really because you you propose that there is no lethal organism that can happen in between and kill the whole chain so why are we studying these two important pillars because they are two important pillars which really does not support the evolution by the meaning of vertical evolution from molecule to man that's impossible but evolution meaning change within a kind yes that's acceptable as i said if there are 200 types of dogs god did not create 200 types of dogs on day 6 when he created the creeping animals he created the wolf with the genetic material in that wolf to differentiate into different types of dogs over many years right today we're going to talk about adam the special creation of adam and how important that is because if adam was not real person that means there is all the 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 basis of the christian faith will collapse because through adam jesus came into the world so if adam is symbolic jesus must be symbolic if there is no original sin and adam and eve did not exist and did not cause the original sin there is no need for a savior and the question we're going to discuss tonight is the importance of adams to explain the gospel and then we will put a big question if we are all descendants of adam and eve why do we have different skin colors why do we have different shape different eye different hair different height all of these issues will be explained during this lecture so this lecture is mainly about the special creation of adam as you can see on the screen this is the genealogy genealogy is descendant of adam till we come to christ and it is very important actually in the gospel of uh, matthew in the first chapter it gives names after names after names we usually don't read this part of the bible really because we can't even but they are important documents 
because Jesus has to come as a so he will be coming into a body from heaven he has to come through Mary and then he has to be from the descendants of Abraham Isaac and Jacob and Jacob has 12 tribes Jesus will appear from the tribe of Judah and then from the family of David so in order for Jesus to fulfill all of these criteria he needs to be, we have to follow the genealogy of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that was explained in Matthew and explained in Luke chapter 3. So these are very, very important documents actually. So let me just take you, obviously we'll never remember all these names, but uh, it is there for us to understand. And I send this uh, slide to uh, Basim. And you'll put it with the lecture so you will have a chance to look at it again. So it starts with Adam, and Adam has many children, by the way. It's not just Cain and Abel and Seth. The Bible in Genesis chapter 5, verse 4, says Adam and Eve had sons and daughters. So there is a big family in the beginning, but the Bible is concentrating on the line from whom the Lord Jesus Christ will come. And that's very important. So Adam says, and then we come to Matuzla and Lamech and Noah. And then from Noah, Sam, Ham, and, and Japheth. And from the descendant of Shem, we have all this line to come to Abraham. And from Abraham, we come to David. And from David, we have two lines. One line for the uh, uh, Blessed Mary and the other line for uh, Joseph. And this is very important, as I said. So people who said Adam never existed, we came from apes, we came from common ancestor, they are really attacking the gospel because if there is no Adam and Eve, everything will collapse. So if, if Adam is metaphoric or group of people or group of animals or, or never existed, then his son never existed is symbolic. Then Noah becomes symbolic. Then Abraham will become symbolic. Then David becomes symbolic. Then Jesus must become symbolic. So that is the seriousness of discussing the special creation of Adam and Eve. We didn't come from apes. There is no scientific ev evidence to prove we came from apes. There is a biblical ground of special creation of the human race. And I told you in the previous lectures that when I was studying biology years and years ago, they said the humans are different races. The Mongolians, the Nigerians, the um, uh, Far Eastern, the Caucasians. And I have to write this in my exams to pass my exam. But they did a mapping of the human genome. That means they took genetic material from different groups of people and compared them. And they came to the conclusion we are all one race. So we are one race with different groups of people, but we are all humans. We are all descendants of Adam and Eve. So if Adam and Eve are symbolic, that means all the descendants are symbolic, then that means Jesus is symbolic and never came to the world. Look what Frank Zendler said. He's an atheist in America. And he said these words, and they are very important. They are very logical, but they are wrong. But the logic is there. The most devastating thing, though, uh, that biology did to Christianity was the discovery of biological evolution. He's saying is the most devastating fact, according to him, is that biology discovered the evolution, that there is no Adam and Eve, and we came from common ancestor. Then he started his logic. Now that we know that Adam and Eve never were real people, this is the central myth of Christianity, is devastated. And then he started to say, if there was never been an original sin, there is no need for a salvation. I think that's logical. If there is no need of salvation, there is no need for a savior. Again, it's logical. And I submit, he says, that puts Jesus, historical or otherwise, if Jesus came or didn't come, into the ranks of unemployed. He says Jesus is unemployed because there is no Adam and Eve. You see the problem of 
of attacking on the gospel here? And he said, I think that evolution is absolutely the death nail of Christianity, that the evolution will kill the Christian faith completely because it destroys the creation of Adam and Eve. Let me tell you what uh, Richard Dawkins said. You know, the Richard Dawkins is a great atheist who travels the world to tell people God doesn't exist. He is saying these words, and we'll go through that very uh, slowly. He said, oh, but of course, the story of Adam and Eve was only ever symbolic, wasn't it? It is just symbolic. It is not real. As unfortunately, lots of Christians are saying that. They say it is a symbolic story to tell us a fact. That's completely wrong, really completely wrong. It is an actual creation of Adam and Eve. It's real. It's people. He said, is it symbolic? Then he started to say, Jesus had himself tortured and executed for a symbolic sin by a non-existing individual. Look, he is laughing at, at us if we believe Adam and Eve were not real. He's saying that means Jesus died for symbolic sin, died for symbolic person who was not existing. He said nobody not, nobody not brought up in the faith could reach any verdict other than barking mad. This is madness. If we deny the, pres the creation of Adam and Eve, because that means Jesus died for no reason. That means he said, this is barking mad. It is madness to think that there is no Adam and Eve. And if science proved there is no Adam and Eve, then the whole Christianity will collapse. But science did not prove that Adam and Eve were not real. Actually, science say that we all came from one, one origin because we are all humans. We are all descendants of Adam and Eve. So this is a very important quotation from a person who doesn't belong to the Christian faith. Let me look at this screen now. And in the bottom, we have Adam and Eve, and we have the tree, and they ate from the tree, from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And by the way, the fruit was not an apple. This is not Adam's apple. This is the larynx. So it is a fruit. We don't know what's the nature of it, but we have just, this is just beside the point, but it wasn't an apple. The, the Bible didn't say that. So Adam and Eve ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, and they disobeyed God. And as a result, sin entered into the world. And with sin came the death and mutation and all the trouble that we face nowadays. The Lord Jesus Christ came and hung on a tree to pay the penalty of sin. Jesus Christ, the last Adam, as 1 Corinthians 15, 45 says. So Jesus Christ is the last Adam. And the first Adam is created by God in day six in the week of creation. And then he said, for as in Adam all die, because we are born in the human race, and the human race has fallen from the standards of God. So we are all born and we have the tendency to make mistakes, to sin. I said, for as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. So it is very important for our Christian faith to understand the special creation of Adam and Eve. Now, this is the last Adam. And the last Adam came died because we all fallen in first Adam. So if we wanted to destroy the last Adam, you actually destroy the first Adam. If you want to say there is no need for the gospel and there is no need for the death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, then all what you need to do is just destroy the first Adam. Say Adam doesn't exist and Eve didn't exist. And as a result, there is no original sin and sin will become relative, and that's it. There is no meaning at all of the Christian message and the gospel. And as I said, Satan's attack is on the origin of the gospel in Genesis 1 to 11. So Jesus was born, and we are going to celebrate Christmas soon. 
And his birth actually divided the history before and after. We are 2019 from the birth of Christ, AD, Anno Domini, the year of our Lord. And by the way, we don't know exactly what is the date of the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ here on earth. The day of 25th of December was a chosen day to celebrate Christ Mass. That's why it's called Christmas. So it, we are not celebrating the date, we are celebrating the event, the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. But the word AD stands for Anno Domini, the year of our Lord. That's the, this year that the Lord was born in. So it is a period rather than a date. That's beside the point because I know there is a big debate now about should we celebrate on the 25th of December or 7th of January and all of that. That's beside the point really. Now, the Lord Jesus Christ was born. His birth divided the history before and after. No other event like man landing on the moon was great, but it didn't divide the history before and after. Discovering of electricity, discovering of antibiotics, the starting to build aeroplanes, all of these great things were there, but it didn't divide the history before and after. But the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ did. And because of that, because he is the savior, because we are a fallen race in first Adam. So the last Adam, Jesus Christ, is dependent on the first Adam. And that is very important. So the, the first Adam brought sin to the world. The last Adam, the Lord Jesus Christ, brought salvation. Everybody happy about that? Any questions? Okay. If there is no question, I'll continue. Right. Now we'll come to the very important question now. If we are all descendants of Adam and Eve, why do we have different shapes and sizes and skin color and shape of the eye and shape of nose and ears and, and all the different shapes of the world that we see as we can see in summary here in this picture? Why do we have that if we are descendants of Adam and Eve? Let us watch this video together and then I'll comment. created order. After God made all the wonders of heaven and earth, the stars, plants, and animals, he then did something very special. He made man in his image. That separates us from the rest of creation. But what does it mean? Biologists look at our outward appearance and classify us with mammals. But there's much more to us than bones and hair. The Bible says God is a spirit, so the image of God must not refer to physical appearance. Compared to animals, it's obvious that we have been endowed with a unique combination of non-physical traits, including language, logic, creativity, and a desire for justice, mercy, and truth. Animals may exhibit a quality like creativity in some small measure, but not in the same way in excellence as man. For example, some animals use simple tools, but we make complex tools that produce other tools. Birds build nests and spiders weave webs, repeating their designs over and over. But we create completely new designs. Yet, it's important to know that the Bible never equates the image of God with any single ability like intelligence, or any combination of abilities like creativity, love, and wisdom. Each one of us is God's image because God said so. No matter how smart or talented we are, no matter our health, skin shape, age, or gender. In fact, the Bible seems to emphasize that the image of God is a status that God himself bestowed on us. The Hebrew word translated image is sechlem, the exact same word used for images that ancient kings made to represent themselves throughout their kingdom. It seems that the creator of heaven and earth gave man the distinct honor and responsibility to his image, showing our love on earth. Okay, so this film explains what is the meaning of the image of God in humans. And I think that's very important to understand. 
God is not talking about our shape and the skin color and the eyes and all of these things. God, when he said, let us make man according to our, to our character, to, to, to God's character, to our image, he wanted the authority of the man on earth. He wants the characteristic, the moral standards that he put in the man and the humans. Because if two gorilla in the, in, the, in the jungle fought with each other and killed one, killed the other, we don't take it to the court because they are animals. But when a man kills another man, he will stand before the court because we have the image of God. So humans are not descendants of ape or ape-like structure. Humans are made on the image of God. And that's really important and essential to understand. And it is not the image of God because, because we are intelligence, we are inventing wonderful things and all of that. No, even if we are not any of these things, we are still the image of God. Because our value is not what we do in life. Our value is who we are because God created us from our image. And when this image is distorted by sin, the Lord Jesus Christ came in to pay the penalty of our sin and to give us new life so we can reflect the character of God as Christians. Right, now, let us ask this question. What color or what shade was Adam and Eve? Usually when we look at the arts, uh, especially in the West, we find that they have Adam and Eve as white people. And now in, in Africa and other places, they make them as dark skin colored people. So let us see what we expect Adam and Eve's color would be. Now the shades of color and not races. Let me explain that. All of us have something called melanin and melanin is coming from a cell called melanocyte, which produces the melanin, which gives the color of our skin. There are lots of other things that affect the color of the skin, the blood vessels underneath, and lots of other things, but mainly is due to the melanin. So all of us have a certain degree of melanin in our skin. Nobody is white, because white is like this paper. This is white. None of us is white like this. All of us has a shade, and we have different shades and different colors, right? So we call it we this is the melanocytes and the melanin as i said and we have different shades but we are all one family so let us say adam and eve are white that means they are light color as i said this there are two words here morphology and genetic makeup morphology is our outside appearance genetic makeup is the coding that makes the color of our skin right so if Adam and Eve were white, it will be the genetic makeup A, A, small A, small A, B, B, small B, small B, and A, A, small A, and small B, right? As if there are two genes responsible. There are about six, actually. So we'll just take two genes as responsible for color, and we'll say they are white, that means light color, and that means A, A, small A, small A, small B, small B, and the mother, small a, small a, small b, small b. We get half of the genetic material from the father and half of the genetic material from the mother, okay? So that means all their descendants will be a, a, b, b, a, a, b, b, small. That means we are all will be light skin, light color, right? Let us assume Adam and Eve were very dark color skin. So the genetic makeup will be capital A, capital A, capital B, capital B, and for, for Eve, capital A, capital A, and capital B, capital B. All their descendants will be dark color. This is called lacking of genetic variation. So Adam and Eve were neither very white or light color or very dark color. We expect them to be in the middle. So the middle color, the, like the Mediterranean color really, is a, the genetic makeup will be capital A, small a, capital B, small b, <clears throat> and the woman capital A, small a, capital B, small b. So that gives variation. 
because this combination, half of this will come from the father and half come from the mother. So if AA and BB capitals came in one uh, offspring, that means to be darker color. If it is AA and B capital from the mother and B small from the mother, that means it is dark, but sl slightly less darker than the previous one. And it goes on the other side, on the lighter side. So we expect Adam and Eve to be middle color. And that means the genetic makeup having the variation that to make all these different colors of people. We'll explain that again and again, but this is just a general picture so we all can understand. So if Adam and Eve have lots of genetic variation, then they can produce these different shades of color. The darker one, the less dark, the more lighter, and the very light. And you know the people who are having no color at all, this is called albinos. They don't have the melanocytes to produce the melanin, and this is really a, a disease or, or lack of genetic material, right? So, all these people are descendants of Adam and Eve and with different combination of the melanin producing cells, the uh, melanocytes. You find the mother is middle color like this, and she has a twins, and they are uh, white, lighter color and darker color, and the same mother. This family here, middle color, but we have the two twins, one is lighter color and one is darker color. These are uh, people, real people in the, in the newspaper. Uh, I have a twin sister who is black, right? These are real people, and this is, was in the Mail in London uh, newspaper in the 26th of June, 1999. So these are two siblings, two, two sisters, who are twins, but one of them is lighter color and one is darker color. That's explainable with genetics. There is no problem with that at all. We have Alicia and Jasmine, and they are from um, parents with a mixed color, and they are twins, and they are having a darker skin and a lighter skin. We have this family in the sun. Uh, they are, again, the, the mother is, is, is lighter color, the father is darker color, and the kids are mixture of uh, lighter color and darker color. All of that explainable by genetics, and there is no issues and no problems with that. So we are all descendants of Adam and Eve, but we have different genetic variation to allow for the different shape and size. That applies to the eye, for example. If you look at the people in the Far East, the Japanese and the Chinese, they have a special design of their eyes, but actually it is the same like mine and yours, but there is a pad of fat underneath in the lower lid and the pad of fat in the upper lid. They have more fat to give the shape that they have. And because they are breathing and interbreeding in the same location, these characteristics called genetic shift and genetic drift. You don't need to worry too much about the genetics, but what I am saying here, the genetics can explain that without any scientific problem at all. After the Tower of Babel, people were divided because of the languages. And when they were divided, they started to have a special community and interbreed in this special community. And as a result, we have the specific characteristics of each group of people. We'll not, cause the, we'll not use the word races anymore. It is different groups of people because they are all descendants of Adam and Eve. This is really to show you the different variation in the genetics. So, number of children one man and one woman could have without having uh, uh, children looking the same. This is the potential of the different combination that can happen after marriage to produce a baby. 
and the combination is really a big massive number 10 to the power 2017 that means 10 and 2017 zeros in front of it this is a massive number nobody can pronounce this number do you know the number of atoms in the universe estimated to be 10 to the power 80 but the number of different combination that can happen is 10 to the power 2017 so that means the variation let me just explain that in a simple way do you know your pin number for your credit card or your debit card or whatever you have only four numbers but the combination of these numbers allows billions of people to have different combinations and use numbers to four four variations right give us massive numbers of possibilities so my pin number will be different from yours different from another people so what i'm trying to say here consider the genetic material like numbers and combine two or three of them in a special order and change one instead of the other and put one at the beginning one at last so the potential of changes is 10 to the power 2017 this is massive right okay what's happening here uh, yeah it's not moving i don't know why let me just do this okay yeah right let me tell you about the effect of the idea of uh, evolution that we came from apes how that affected people and affected their understanding of how they treat each other let me tell you about a chap called Ota Binga, and you can read about Ota Binga in the, uh, on the internet. He was from Africa, and the African people in the tribes, they um, uh, make the teeth, uh, they, they sometimes um, uh, um, um, what I want to say, chisel the, the teeth in a special way according to the tribe. So people visited this part of Africa and they found Ota Binga, that's his name. And they said, this is uh, an intermediate between apes and humans. They took him and put him in a zoo. So he lived among the, the animals and he used to, to live uh, uh, in, in an animal compound in a zoo with the, with the apes and with, with the monkeys. And after some time, they discovered he's fully human. So they took him out and he returned back to his own country. And then he couldn't live anymore and he committed suicide. So that is the effect of people believing in evolution and believing that we came from common ancestor and we are like apes in the zoo in london they brought some people in the morning and they put them with the monkeys and they paid them to go to come and do this job and obviously they recovered their genitalia but the monkeys don't cover themselves actually because they are animals, but we are humans. And they allowed them to jump like this one and to play with the, uh, to, to clean their, their heads from nest, nets and things like that, as if they are like animals. And let us see what the spokeswoman of the zoo said. She said, seeing people in a different environment among other animals teaches members of the public that the human is just another primate. So they're saying that we are just part of the same family like primates, and as a result, we can live together. And obviously that was a shame. That happened in early 1912. So it's not far away, about more than 100 years ago, because they believe that we are just animals. 
As I said, evolution has three dimensions, biological and geological in the layers of the earth and the, the fossils, and cosmological, that's the Big Bang. And this is the flood geology. We believe that during the flood, most of the animals were, fo were, were fossilized. Um, let me just um, stop for a minute here and take you to to the humans again. Okay. Right. Um. Okay. Um, can we take a break now for five minutes? I need to change my slides. Is that okay? Osama? Okay. Okay, okay everybody? Sure. We'll take, okay. Right. Um, I, I just uh, collected a few things from other presentations to give you the full picture, really. So according to evolution, they think we came from the imaginary uh, grandfather, and there is this is the Australian, the Nigerians, the Mongolians, the Caucasians, and obviously that proved to be wrong. Let us watch this film. I hear together. this one a lot. How can there be so many races in the world if we were all descendants of Adam and Eve? Well, check this out. First off, let's talk about the word race. Sometimes when people use the word, they mean supposed races of people who have evolved at different times, rates, and in different locations. That's not true. Of course, the word race is also a term we use to distinguish between groups with different physical traits, namely skin color. But are there really different races? Take a gander at Acts 17.26, where it is written that God, from one man, made every nation of men. It's clear then that the Bible teaches that there is one race, the human race. The Bible is also clear that all people on the earth are descendants of Adam and Eve who were created by God. Check Genesis 126 through 28. Easy enough. God created two people in his image, male and female, and told them to increase in number. So Adam and Eve are mom and dad of the human race. Then their children had children, and those children had children, and so on and so forth for many generations until, according to Genesis 6, 9, the world's population was reduced to eight people who were protected inside an ark during a global flood. And those eight people later walk off the ark. And according to Genesis 9, 19, from them came the people who were scattered over the earth. Oh, wait a second. What do I mean scattered? We'll jump over to Genesis 11. Let's talk about an event known as the Tower of Babel. Basically, because of the sinful actions of the descendants of Noah, the Lord confused their language and scattered them from there over all the earth. That's pretty clear and concise. Okay, so we've got lots of people who are descendants of the eight folks who came off the ark, and now they have been scattered all over the earth. That explains that we are still one race and that different groups of people ended up in different locations. But how do we get a bunch of different colored people if we are all one race? Well, follow along. This, of course, is a simplified explanation, but the basic principles are true. We all have a pigment in our bodies called melanin, which, depending on different variables, produces different shades of the one main skin color we all possess. Several genes control the amount of melanin produced and thus the variability in the skin shade. In fact, it's easy for one couple to produce a wide range of skin shade variability in just one generation, as we'll see in just a moment. Time for a quick genetics lesson. DNA is the molecule of heredity that is passed from parents to children. A child inherits 23 chromosomes from each parent. Each chromosome pair contains hundreds of genes which regulate the physical development of the child. However, to illustrate basic genetic principles pertaining to the topic, we'll just talk about two genes, the genes that control the production of melanin. So, let capital A and capital B symbolize versions of the gene that code for large amounts of melanin, while little a and little b code for small amounts. Got it? Easy. Check this out. Take a look at the upper left. Let's say dad contributes capital A, capital B genes, and mom contributes capital A, capital B genes as well. Together, they will produce a child with capital A, capital A, capital B, and capital B. This is a kid with a lot of melanin, and thus he will have very dark skin. Easy to see. Here's the bigger point, though. Let's say dad contributes capital A, capital B, and mom contributes little a and little b. Well, the child's skin will be middle brown shade, the combination of capital A, little a, and capital B, little b, which, by the way, represents a majority of the world's population. Not only that, but if each parent is capital A, little a, capital B, little b, the combinations that could be produced in their children could result in a very wide range of skin shades in just one generation. So, since Adam and Eve were the first people ever, it makes sense to conclude that God placed in them a combination of genes that could produce all different shades of skin we see. 
those same combinations would be present in Noah and the seven other people who boarded the ark. And because God dispersed people at the Tower of Babel, he dispersed the population, thereby isolating gene pools in the different people groups. Over time, different cultures formed in different locations with certain features like skin shade becoming predominant. And here we are today. And since we all go back to Noah and his family, it makes sense that we are all different shades of brown. One race, multiple people groups, just like the Bible teaches. Simplified for sure, but enough said. I hope you enjoyed this video because really it explains wonderfully how we have different uh, shades of, of skin and we are only one group of people. Are we all in? I, I don't see anybody on the screen. Hello? Yes, doctor, I'm in. We are, we are here. Here. We are. Okay, thank you, because it all disappeared here, so I was worried. No, no. That's great. Okay, go back again, yeah. Right, so this this really very important um, video, that's why I just uh, had to, to find it in another presentation to put it for you, because it really tells us how we are only one race, but different shades of color. Now, let us talk about unique features in humans. We'll take the foot, the structure of the feet, really, and Yes, the, the apes have five fingers, but the, the thumb is, uh, is gapping between the thumb and the other four because they would like to control or to come on top of, of, of um, branches of tree. So they need this structure. But humans, completely different. We have the human arches, the, the, the arches in the feet here, in the foot, and we have three point fixation. That means we have one point here and two points here in the sole, so we can stand straight without losing balance. You remember if you have the tripod, the tripod is when you have the camera uh, based on triangular structure because there are three point fixation, so it can fix the, the, the the, 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 the structure so we can put the camera on the tripod pot. So this is exactly the same here. The structure of our feet is completely different from the feet of the apes, and that is completely different structure. Yes, we have five toes, and they have five toes, but these are differently structured, and the function is completely different. Right. Let us see how the world tries to tell us that we are all came from apes. So in March 1994, in the big magazine like the Times, we have in the first page on the, on the cover, how man began fossil bones from the down of humanity are rewriting the story of evolution. So they gave us a picture like this and remember, they didn't have fossils for hair. They didn't have fossils for the skin of this particular person. They found the small bones and they imagined the rest. And look at the eye. I like to, you to, to concentrate on the eye. The eyes of the human have the middle part here, the cornea, and the sclera. The sclera here is white. In the apes, it is all colored. There is no white at all. So, they put a picture like this, a mixture of man and, 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 and ape, to give us the impression that we came from apes. In the time in 2001, you have this picture now here, how apes became humans. And they give you this picture of this, this uh, creature, and look at the eyes again. You find the sclera white, and that is really, uh, and the, the rest of the picture is giving a picture of an ape. Because in the ape in the middle here, there is something called ethmoid bone, and it is flat in the, in the um, apes and the monkeys. So remember, the, monkeys ca the monkey cannot wear glasses because there is no big bone here, prominent bone in the middle. So they are combining here in these features, features of an ape and a monkey and an eye of a human. So they try to mix that. They didn't have a fossil for an eye. They imagined it, they wrote it, they, they, they draw it, it's not real. Then in National Geographic, you have this picture, the first pioneer, the first man, 
and they give you this picture again. And again, look at the eye. They give a human eye in a skull which is like a skull of, of an ape to give you an impression that that's how we developed. Then you come to the scientific America and you have a skull like a, a, an ape because the apes are about 400 cc cubic centimeters. The humans about 1500 centimeter. So they give you a head, a small head like an ape with an eye like human and they give you the hair. We don't have fossils for hair. This is just imagination and writing of humans. Then you have National Geographic gives you the impression of an ape because there is no ethmoid bone here. Remember this area here? And they give you the eyes like the eyes of humans. So they are trying to mix all of this. And this is actually artwork. It is not science. So they say that we came all from common ancestor and we branch it into all these types of people. This decides Champanese and Gorilla, and this is Orangutan, and this is the human uh, tree, Homo habilis and Homo sapiens and uh, Nandratel and Homo sapiens at the top. That's who are we. We believe in what we call the, uh, the, the, the forest of creation. So the humans are one descendant, the Homo erectus uh, and the, the Nendratels and Homo uh, sapiens, uh, sapiens are all humans. The others are chimpanzees and gorillas. Right, let us talk now about what we call Australopithecus afrensis. Don't worry about, about the big name because we'll call it Lucy and I'll explain that in a minute. Australopithecus meaning the southern apes because they found in Ethiopia um, in 1974 they discovered some skeleton and they said this is the intermediate between apes and humans and they started to say this is called Australopithecus afarensis and they called it Lucy and this is the very famous intermediate worldwide called Lucy. And they called it Lucy because the Beatles had a song saying Lucy in the sky. And when they discovered these bones, they said it is called Lucy. So let us see what they found in Lucy. They found about 40% of the skeleton. They didn't find a foot at all. And they didn't find a full skull. Let us see what they found. They found these bones of the skull and the lower jaw and then they found ribs and the vertebral column some of it and part of the upper limb this is called humerus and then two bones hold radius and ulna they didn't find a full hand but they found some digits they found half of the pelvis these are the pelvic bones this is called the sacrum and this is called the ilium. And then they found a humerus, that's the big bone in the thigh here. And then they found the knee in another area. And they, they imagined the rest. So they found about 40% of the skeleton and they imagined the rest. Let us see how they, they wrote or they, they display um, Lucy in the museum. The 40% the they added the two feet here. They didn't fi find any fossils for the feet. They didn't find a full hand. They didn't find a full skull, but they imagined the rest and they put the hair like this. They didn't find hair or skin at all. And they imagined that the mouth will be like this. All that they found is the lower jaw, but they didn't find the rest. They started to give her a full hand and make her stand straight. To stand straight, you need changes in the pelvic bones here. You need changes, changes in the knee. You need changes in the foot here to be able to stand straight like this. But this is how they presented in the museum. But in actual fact, it was uh, an ape walking on four, like a gorilla. But it is not really a human at all. 
So that is in London Museum. You have the Lucy explained like this, but remember what they found is only 40% of the skeleton. When you go to St. Louis, you found Lucy standing like this, and they give her the impression that she is thinking, and they give her the eyes. Remember the eyes? They didn't find fossils for the eyes at all, but they give her the eyes, and they give her the hands, and they give her a skin, and all this hair on the skin. They didn't find any of that. This is all imagination, because they wanted Lucy to be the intermediate between humans and, and animals. In Chicago, you find Lucy like this. Remember, they found only 40% of the skeleton, but they imagined the rest, and they gave her a small head, because as I said, the brain capacity in the um, apes is about 400 mil, uh, or a cubic cc, um, cubic centimeters, and in the human between 1200 to 1500 cc. So they give her all this picture. So you go and visit this museum, and you see these pictures or these uh, models, and you say, oh, this is an intermediate between humans and, uh, and, and, and uh, apes. Then in the BBC, there was a big program about Lucy or the Australopithecus afarensis, and they described her like this. Look how the, uh, this ethmoid bone is depressed, the eyes are like apes, and the head is a smaller head, and they gave us the impression that this is a real thing. Then Richard Leakey is the director of Kenya National Museum, and he said in 1981, he said, we can say with absolute certainty that the uh, Australopithecus afarensis were walking straight like us, right? And then in 1982, <coughs> he started to say, we don't know really if it was wa walking upright or walking on four because we haven't found a full skeleton. And then in the uh, um, uh, uh, scientific meeting, he started to say all the, the, the facts that he mentioned in the BBC program was completely wrong. So within a year, he changed his idea about how he understood Lucy. And then they said this Lucy is about 15 to 20 million years old. And he said, this is a, a, a wrong foundation to all the information I shared on the BBC News. So this is the foot of Lucy. And as I said, they didn't found the sto uh, bones for the, uh, for the skeleton. And they described her as a standing. And in order to stand, you have to have lots of changes here, massive changes. This is not true. Now, all of this just to tell you that all what they have found is changing what they understood. And they said, we really don't know which creature give, uh, give uh, rise to another creature. Now, there was a, an, a scientist called um, Owen Lo Lovejoy, and he found that the uh, angles of the pelvis these are the pelvic bones, and this is the sacrum. The angles of the sacrum wouldn't allow Lucy to stand. So let us see what happened. He took, he made a copy of the original specimen, and he went to the lab, and I let you see what happened in this video. And this is found on the YouTube as well. So you can listen from the YouTube. But all was not lost. Lovejoy decided he could restore the pelvis to its natural shape. He didn't want to tamper with the original, so he made a copy in plaster. He cut the damaged pieces out and put them back together the way they were before Lucy died. It was a tricky job. 
But after taking the kink out of the pelvis, it all fit together perfectly, like a three-dimensional jigsaw puzzle. As a result, the angle of the hip looks nothing like a chip's, but a lot like ours. You see what happened? He found that the angles here of the pelvis wouldn't allow Lucy to be able to stand straight, as they claimed. So he made a replica of what they had. As I said, they found just half of the pelvis. This is the ilium, and this is called the sacrum. So he found these two bones, and he made a copy of them with plaster. And he went to his laboratory, and he changed the angles to make this is standing, and this is what Lovejoy had done. So they wanted to see the the intermediate, so they, they designed one for themselves. Then we move into another um, uh, uh, intermediate they claimed called Nindratal. The Nindratal were found in, the, in, in Germany and uh, they are people who lived really under severe conditions and they have strong bones. And actually, the BBC recently claimed that Nindratels are actually human. And we have Nindratel genes in our body as humans nowadays uh, in, in different parts of the world. So the Nindratel man was described like this in 1856. And then in 1983, he was described like this. And there is um, a museum for Nindratels in Germany. And they have these pictures of Nindratal, and this is an Nindratal as well, like anybody of us really walking the street. So this is uh, in Zurich. They said this is the daughter of Nindratal, and they are all human, 100% humans. And this is the evidence that Nindratals were 100% humans because they made uh, instruments and uh, they put makeup they were able to uh, fish and, uh, and, and, and get some animals from, uh, from the sea. Uh, they were able to control the fire and they made meals. They, they built houses with the, uh, um, with the skin of animals. They, was able, they were able to make uh, instruments for singing and music. They cared for their sick people and they uh, buried their uh, dead. They made uh, uh, ships and, 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 and boats. They were having the, something called the hyoid bone here and a gene called FOXP2, which is responsible for speaking. So there were 100% humans, and there is evidence now of Nindiratels being humans. More of these uh, things that they thought they are intermediates, because if you are coming from apes, we should have a creature which have characteristics of an ape and characteristic of humans. This is called Piltdown Man in 1912, and the evidence was part of the jaw, two teeth, and part of the skull. And they said this is a creature which lived about uh, a million to half million to a million years ago, and he is the intermediate. In 1953, they examined the bones again because all that they found, as I said, is part of the, uh, of the jaw, two teeth and part of the skull. And in 1953, they discovered that this was a hoax. Two uh, uh, British uh, scientists with some French scientists got some bones and they painted them to make them old and they put them in the Natural Museum in London and they, they, they hid them so nobody can examine them but when the scientists said, we'd like to examine all these specimens, the result was, it is a hoax. It is just something they made up. I spoke to you about Nebraska man before. In 1922, 
they said, we found the intermediate between humans and ape. And do you know what they found? They found one tooth, one tooth. Can you imagine from one tooth, you can describe this man here and his wife and the area where he lived. That's impossible really. But in 1927, they examined this tooth again and they found it, it is of uh, an extinct uh, pig. So this is Nebraska man, if you want to see Nebraska man. What I want to say here is, if you are a Christian living in 1922 in America, and the papers and the books and everything coming out saying, we found Nebraska man, we found the intermediate, then the tendency of the Christian to say, okay, we'll follow what they say in the media and we'll forget the Bible. And then wait till 1927, when the science comes back and say, no, we were wrong, it was a, a pig and the extinct pig, and it is not the intermediate. As we said in the beginning of this course, that we examine everything, we should examine everything, but we should held into the truth. We should concentrate on the word of God. Um, the box grove man, again, it was, uh, they, they consider it um, an intermediate, but it, roof, it proved to be a completely human and it's completely wrong. Let me just show you this and then we'll open the, the time for discussion before we finish. This is called Behind the Scenes in National Geographic. They found these seven pieces of bone and they wanted to uh, uh, build a human from this. So the art department uh, put an advert to get a, uh, uh, an artist to build a human out of these seven bones. And they consider it a female, and they give her an age of two million years. Again, they consider it a female because of the sacrum. This is the area of the pelvis at the back. And from the curvature of the sacrum, you can differentiate between male and female. They, they consider it a female, and they wanted to get um, artists to build human skeleton from this. So the four artists that came in, they started to build four different models. So the first model is a big head, so it's more to humans. And then this is more to humans. This is more to ape, and this is more to ape. Let us see what they did. Remember, all what they have to work on is these seven small bones. Can from these seven small bones to build anything? I don't think you can. Let us see what happened then. The first artist put this creature with these seven bones as this straight man <coughs> standing like this. And remember, he made his knees knocking to each other. Our human knee is not like that exactly. And he made the arms st straight, uh, uh, stronger, because in the uh, apes, the arms are longer than the, the legs. So he gave some impressions of humans and some impression of apes. The second one made the face very human and made the arms very long. The upper arm is two thirds of the lower limb. So it comes to the middle of the thigh. It doesn't come to the knee but he made the, the arm very, very long to give the impression we were walking in four. Again, from these seven bones that I showed you earlier, do you think he can build a structure like this? I don't think so. Then the third artist made it like an, a, a, locking ank, a locking wrist. Our wrists are moving, but this is locking. Locking means it is... Uh, uh, you can walk on, 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 on the upper limbs. So he made it like an ape on the upper part, but the lower part like humans. The fourth art, artist put him on a tree 
with long, long arms and small head like, a, like an ape, and the rest is like humans. So this is an artistic work. It is not science. It is not built on information. It's not built on real fossils. So they, then they say, this is Lucy's daughter. What they found is the things in the yellow, right? More of a skull, more of a scapula here, and more of the uh, thoracic cage, and part of the humerus, and part of two bones here called tibia and fibula, and part of the foot, but not a complete foot, and one digit, and the rest is imagination. All of the white is imagination. It is not real. And you give you this skeleton, giving the impression this is really um, the intermediate. Right. So we discussed that before, that the apes and humans can share 98%. And we, we gave this example العم بوب ذهب لصيد الغزال العم غزال ذهب لصيد بوب These are two statements which is 100% equal but the meaning is completely different. Right, let me just uh, show you what the Bible says and then I'll show you another film and then I'll open the place for discussion. God created humans on his, in, is, is on his own image. On the image of God, he created them male and female. And God is not male and female. God is a spirit. But they are created in image of God in character, but not physically. Because God doesn't have a physical appearance. So being male and female, that's how he created them in the physical appearance. Let us see this film. No, it's not coming. Yeah, we have seen that before. Right, in 1 Corinthians 15, it says that every body is the same. There is a special body for humans, another body for animals, another point for, uh, body for fish, and another body for birds. And in Genesis 2.7, it tells us that God took the dust of the earth and he breathed in the human a breath of life and Adam became a living creature. So in the biblical creation, we have the dust and then formation of man and God breathed in him the life and he became a living creature. But in the evolution idea, some people say God used evolution to create and this is called theistic evolution. They believe that there was an ape-like creature and God started to speak to him and he made human and that's completely wrong. When Adam and Eve disobeyed God, God said that you will die and you will go back to the earth because you came from earth and from dust you, to dust you go back. He didn't say you came from humanoids and from humanoids you go back. And when Adam gave the names of all the animals and birds, he did not find an equal to him at all because Adam is unique. That's why God created Eve to Adam. And by the way, we read that in Genesis chapter 2. But Genesis chapter 2 is flashback to Genesis chapter 1. So Eve was created in day 6. It's not after the week of creation. We need to go to that. We'll discuss that in detail later on. Let me just see what's in this. Yeah, let us watch this dominion. في ختام الخليقة عمل الله الإنسان على صورته ذكرا وأنثى خلقهم وقال ليتسلطوا على كل الأرض إن السلطان يعني أكثر من الحكم عن بعد إنه يتطلب التدخل الشخصي بينما يعتني الله بخليقته بأيد غير منظورة فإن البشر المخلوقين على صورته مدعوون لأن يعتنوا بالخليقة بأيد ظاهرة وبينما يتسلط الله على خليقته ويحكمها بسلطة غير منظورة فإن البشر عليهم أن يخضعوا الأرض بطرق منظورة في الحكم والسلطة 
وهبنا الله أيضا صفات معينة الذكاء، الإبداع، اللغة لنتمكن من التسلط جيدا أول مهمة أوكلت لآدم كانت أن يدعو الحيوانات بأسماء امتياز التسمية مسؤولية جسيمة كأب أو أم يسمون وليدا في الكتاب المقدس فعل التسمية مليء بالمعنى إنه دليل على السلطان وعلى المعرفة الشخصية بالشيء الذي يسمى كما دعا الله الصباح والمساء والسماء والأرض بالنسبة لآدم كانت تسمية الحيوانات أول خطوة لممارسة سلطانه عليها فمسؤولية الإنسان هي أن يدرس العالم ويفهمه كي يستطيع أن يحكم بالحكمة بالنسبة لكل منا امتياز السلطان يتبعه مسؤولية كبيرة سيطلب منا أن نعطي حسابا لله عن كيفية اهتمامنا بخليقته كيف أحببنا؟ كيف حكمنا؟ كيف تسلطنا؟ باختصار سوف نحاسب على كيفية خدمتنا لله كوكلاء على خليقته So this is really shows us the, the authority that God gave to humans and that's completely different from animals. Right, all these references really I'll, I'll put it in English on your, um, your, your program by tomorrow or day after. And it just tells us that we, are, we came from one blood. He made all the nations of the earth. Let me just see what's in this. Yeah, this is the chimpanzees walking. Look how they are walking on four. And the small head and the, the, uh, the upper limb is longer than the lower limb. And the pelvis here is different. This is walking on straight, and that's completely different mechanism altogether. So, yes, the, the apes can walk for a short period of time, but they cannot sustain the walking for a long time because they are not designed to do so. Right. Um, yeah, I like you to watch this, and then we'll have question time. Welcome to the Attenborough Studio and a unique opportunity to meet some of the scientists here at the museum and learn more about the wonders of the natural world. I'm going to take you on a journey, a journey to discover who you really are and where you came from. But you're not just going to sit there listening to me, you're going to be part of the experience and you'll be able to examine some of the evidence for evolution along the way. If you have a look at your screens now, you can rotate the modern human skull and you'll see the domed forehead, the small face, the small front teeth and on the lower jaw, the chin. If you keep looking through your screen, you will see Australopithecus afarensis, an extinct hominid who lived about three million years ago. You'll see Coelophysis, one of the dinosaurs that lived at the same time as our mammal ancestors. For 160 million years, our tiny relatives scurried round the forest floor while dinosaurs dominated the planet. Deep sea anglers live at a depth in the ocean below a thousand meters where there's no light, so they're living in total darkness. It was our fishy ancestors that first developed some of our most fundamental features. Our skeleton, jaws, and four limbs. They also developed buoyancy sacs full of air, which later evolved into primitive lungs. This is our DNA sequencing machine. Inside here, our banana DNA is passing in front of a laser, which is illuminating a specific color for each A, T, G, and C the four-letter alphabet that makes up all DNA sequences. By looking at the differences between DNA in different species, scientists have... Physics, one of the dinosaurs that lived at the same... At a depth in the ocean below a thousand meters where there's no light, so they're living in total darkness. It was our fishy ancestors that first developed some of our most fundamental features. 
are skeleton, jaws, and four limbs. They also developed buoyancy sacs full of air, which later evolved into primitive lungs. This is our DNA sequencing machine. Inside here, our banana DNA is passing in front of a laser, which is illuminating a specific color for each A, T, G, and C, the four-letter alphabet that makes up all DNA sequences. By looking at the differences between DNA in different species, scientists have worked out their evolutionary relationships. The greater the difference in DNA between two species, the more time must have passed since the two groups separated. Hold up your screen and look through it one last time at the center of the studio. You'll see the tree that represents all of life, past and present. We started this film with a question, who do you think you are? And we can end it with an answer. You are undoubtedly, like everyone else, a member of one single family of life, descended from a common ancestor living thousands of millions of years ago. Look how the people try to explain to us who we are by saying, like the fish when it started to develop the spinal cord, that's the fish bone at the back, that means that's the start of forming the vertebral column in humans and make us humans after that. This is not science, really it's not science. It is just a story, an event that they try to say that this is who we are. Right, we discussed all of that, so I'll give you now a chance to ask me questions because I think this is a very important topic and I hope we covered it reasonably well. Let me just see if there is anything that else I'd like to show you. No, I think we covered all of that. Okay, any questions? Yes, I have a question. Can you please explain more? How were we made in the image of God? Like, I know it's not physical. We do not resemble him because he's a spirit. But please explain what, yeah. is, what does it mean we're created in the image of God? Yeah. The, the image of God in character. It is not the image of God in physical because God is a spirit. When we say the hand of the Lord, it is just to explain to us a meaning of power. When we say Jesus sat on the right hand of God, that's the place of power. So we don't, God is a spirit, so he is not limited. When we say the eye of God, God can see, but it's not through a cornea and a lens and an optic nerve and things like that. He can see because he created the sight. God can speak. It is not through the vocal cords and the... Um, genetics that allow us to speak. God is the source of all of that. So we are in the image of God in character, but not physically. Because God created Adam and Eve, he created them a male and female. So this is a physical appearance of humans, which is different from God. That's why we have a moral code so as I said, if a gorilla fought with another gorilla and killed it, we don't take the killer to the judge, to, to, uh, to the court to be judged. But if human kills another human, he will be taken to the court. You see the point? So we are in the image of God in character, not physically. Okay? Okay. Any other questions? أنا دكتور عندي سؤالين تفضل أول سؤال الناس اللي بتقول أو المؤمنين اللي بيقولوا إن الـ evolution هو اللي جاب آدم وإيف يس yes. إمتى الله قرر إن هو يحط uh, his image عليهم يعني حصلت evolution وجم اتنين uh, human being بعد كده هما بيقولوا إن ربنا راح 
قال انا اخترت دول فدول هحط فيهم ماي ايمج هيبتدوا يفكروا هيبقى عندهم انتليكشوال هيبقى عندهم مايند هيبقى عندهم ايمج هيبقى عندهم حاجات مختلفه عن كل الجيل اللي سابق يا yeah. وبيفسروها ازاي يعني ما ما لهاش تفسير صدقني لان هي مشكله ثاني كمان انه هل هم مثلا كانوا نايمين على اساس انهم رود وصحي الصبح لا وربنا كلمهم وتحولهم دي حاجه تخض يعني ولازم يكلم راجل ومراته في نفس الوقت عشان يعملوا اسره اه اوكي فدي مشكله كبيره قوي لان هم الناس بيحاولوا يخلطوا زي ما نقول الشامي على المغربي يعني عايزين يخلطوا افكار العالم على الاعلان المعلن في الكتاب المقدس فبالتالي لا بيرضوا العالم ولا بيرضوا الكتاب المقدس لان لو بتوع نشوء الارتقاء لو قلت لهم ربنا يستخدم النشوء الارتقاء يقول لك لا ده النشوء الارتقاء ده عمليه عشوائيه غير موجهه تمام لما تقول ربنا وجهها يقول لك انت بتخرف تيجي للكلمه المقدسه لو قلت ان ربنا وجه النشوء الارتقاء معناه مستخدم الموت والحياه عشان يخلق وده مش دي الخلاقه بتاعت ربنا فلما بنبعد عن النص الكتابي وبنبعد عن الحق الكتابي بندخل في متاهات الناس بتوع نشوء الارتقاء بيقولوا ان الانسان ظهر من حوالي 70 الف سنه وبعض الناس بيقولوا من 120 الف سنه في ناس بيقولوا ظهر في افريقيا وناس بيقولوا ظهر في جنوب شرق اسيا بيقولوا الجد التخيلي كان من حوالي 4 مليون ل 6 مليون سنه اللي تفرعنا منه فرع بقى القرود والنسانيس وفرع بقى الانسان دي افكار العالم لكن طبعا لا تتفق مع الكتاب المقدس ودي افكار مش مثبته علميا ده اللي انا عايز اكده دي افكار محطوطه بس عندهم لكن غير مثبته علميا بالمره فما فيش داعي ان احنا نرجع لها بالمره السؤال الثاني الكدف الكدفر بتاعت او البون بتاعت لوسي ايوه هل حد جرب انه السي سي 14 عليها فيعرف عمرها قد ايه بالظبط ولا الموضوع ده ما تناقش؟ لا بص السي 14 ده الكربون 14 ده بيقرر لحد اقصى حاجه ليه 100000 سنه وهم بيقولوا ان اللوسي دي 2.5 مليون سنه يعني ما حدش حد... لا طبعا ما حدش يرضى يجرب عليها كربون 14 ده احنا لو جربنا عليها كاربون 14 وطلع فيها كاربون 14 تريسز معنى كده ان هي عمرها مش ملايين السنين عمرها الاف السنين بس فما حدش بيجرؤ انه يعمل عليها كاربون 14 هم حددوا عمرها من طبقات الارض اللي هم حطوا لها عمر افتراضي برضو هنتكلم عن ده في الطوفان بالتفصيل لكن في لوسي ما حددوش عمرها بال بالكربون 14 لا طبعا لان هم بيفترضوا انها 2.5 مليون سنه فالكربون 14 يديك لحد 100000 سنه بس فما حدش يعملها عارف الكربون الفحم وال والالماز الالماز عباره عن كربون فبيقولوا ان الالماز عمره 350 مليون سنه اوكي ففي جماعه علماء يبقى المفروض ما يبقاش فيه كربون 14 خالص ليه؟ لان كربون 14 بيقعد لحد 100000 سنه بس تمام؟ امم تمام وبعدين الالماس دي محجره يعني فيري سوليد فمش بتقبل كونتامينيشن فروم اوت سايد فجم علماء مسيحيين بعتوا عينات من الالماس عشان تتحلل لقوا فيها اثار لكربون 14 يبقى معنى كده انها مش ملايين السنين هي الاف السنين بس. اوكي. الكلام ده للاسف ما بيتدرس بقى عشان كده احنا عاملين البرنامج ده. الكلام ده ما الطلبه مش بيدرسوه في المدارس ولا في الجامعات. الكلام ده لازم تشوفه في مصادر حد بيؤمن بالكتاب المقدس والخليقه والعلم. احنا مش ضد العلم على فكره بالمره. زي ما انت شايف في كل الحاجات اللي بنعرضها بنقدم علم حقيقي مش مش افتراضي فمع العلم التشغيلي ما فيش اي تناقض مع علم الافتراضي طبعا في تناقض كبير قوي بين نظريه النشوء والارتقاء والكتاب المقدس اوكي اي اسئله تانية احبها
يس دكتور انا كنت عايزه اسال برضو الحته بتاعت لوسي انا ما فهمتش قوي الراجل اللي هو طلع اتكلم عنها ان هي مواصفاتها وشكلها وكده وبعدين جه بعديها بسنه انكر كل الكلام ده ف... أيوة. فهو فهو الاول هو ايه اللي خلاه غير رايه و... والحاجه الثانيه هي دلوقتي بالنسبه لل... للعلماء او للمجتمع هي هيومن ولا مش هيومن يعني <تصفيق> تمام سؤالين حلوين بصي اسمه ريتشارد ليكي وده راجل رئيس المتحف ال كينيا وراجل علامه كبير في الحفريات بس طبعا مش مؤمن بالكتاب المقدس هو فبيقول لك لما عملوا ابحاث ثانيه على لوسي على ال 40% من العظام ابتدى يقول ان انا كل المعلومات اللي قدمتها في حلقات البي بي سي دي كانت غلط لان انا قلت انها واقفه منتصبه تماما ما نقدرش نعرف اذا كان الكائن منتصب تماما الا لما يكون في الراس كامله والعمود الفقري كامل والرجلين موجودة والقدم موجودة وهي ما عندهاش كل الحاجات دي فكلها كانت افتراضات عشان يخلوها حلقة متوسطة راح قال انها واقفة ومنتصبة تماما وبعدين بعد سنة قال لك لا ده كلام مش علمي وقدام المعهد البريطاني للعلماء بتوع البيليانتولوجي اللي هم علم الانسان وكده قال لهم الكلام اللي انا قلته قبل كده ما كانش دقيق ودي أمانة علمية أشكره عليها يعني تمام؟ فلوسي لما زي ما وريتها لك في المتاحف بيقولوا عليها حلقة متوسطة بس هم شوفي عاملين فيها إيه؟ عاملين لها رجل وعاملين لها إيدين كاملة وعاملين لها راس مع إني ما عندناش من الجمجمة ما يكفي إن إحنا نعمل راس وعاملين لها إنها واقفة منتصبة مغيرين في عظام الحوض بتاعتها مغيرين في الركبة بتاعتها فبيخلوها واقفة يقول لك دي حلقه متوسطه بعدين يملاها جلد وبعدين يحط عليه شعر كتير قوي زي ما انت شفتي فيقول لك ده زيك ما كانه قرود فانت تدخلي متحف محترم في بريطانيا في لندن او في شيكاغو او في حته محترمه تلاقي المنظر ده تقول لك خلاص ده هنقول ايه بقى ما هو في الدليل اهو هو مش دليل ولا حاجه احنا عندنا في متحف الخليقه في سنسناتي عاملينها في صوره انها ايب انها قرد وانها طولها حوالي 90 سم مش حاجه كبيره وماشي على اربعه مش ماشي على اثنين مش ماشي على قدمين انا عندي صوره بس للاسف مش هقدر اجيبها لك دلوقتي لمتحف الخليقه حاطين فيها لوسي بقى بالتركيب البيولوجي بتاعها والتركيب اللي لقوه بالعظام الموجوده فادي لوسي يا ستي عشان كده في مشكله كل الاجيال اللي طالعه في كتب البيولوجي وكده هيدرسوا دي على اساس انها الحلقه المتوسطه وهيصدقوا الكلام ده مش هيسمعوا الراي الاخر هو ما بيتقالهمش ان هي اتلقى منها 40% مش كده؟ يعني هو آه. اللي, آه. اللي بيتعرض بس ان هي الشكل الكامل الحلقه المتوسطه ايوه انها الحلقه المتوسطه م. يعني طب فين نلاقي المعلومات الحقيقيه يعني التروث بيهايند المعلومات اللي احنا بنسمعها دي يعني ندور آه. عليها فين؟ عشان آه. نثبت لما نخش في مناقشه مع حد أيوة. وعايزين نثبت الكلام ده ما احنا هنقول لهم ده هم لقوا منها 40% هيقول لي جبتي الكلام ده منين؟ اه في بقى ال... في ويب سايتس محترمه زي مثلا انسرز ان جينيسيس دوت اورج دي هتديكي في حاجه اسمها تكنيكال ارتكلز التكنيكال ارتكلز دي هتلاقي فيها راي العلماء الملحدين بالكامل والراي المسيحي اللي رد عليه فا انسرز ان جينيسيس عندهم حاجه اسمها ريسيرش ماجازين وعندهم ماجازين عاديه فا انسرز ان جينيسيس اكتبي لوسي مثلا هيروح اعطيكي كل البيانات ويقول لك انت 40% ويديك الريفرنس بتاعها يعني كل انا بشرح لكم هنا بناء على المعلومات اللي انا اتعلمتها ولكن لو عايزه ترجعي للاصول بتاعتها تلاقيها في انسرز ان جينيسيس ف حطي انسر ان جينيسيس دوت اورج واكتبي لوسي مثلا او انترميديتس بين هيومنز اند ايبس هتلاقي بقى معلومات مهوله موجوده بس دي مش ال... مش الويب سايتس اللي الناس العاديه بتروح لها للاسف ففي كل اللي بنقوله ده ليه ادله 
اتفضل يعني اوكي يعني عايز اقول انه في حاجه شكلها يعني شكلها مخيفه الحقيقه يعني في محاولات مستميته علشان نثبت ان او او انه إن الناس بتوع نشوء الارتقاء يثبتوا انه الحلقه المفقوده او الحلقه المتوسطه دي موجوده و... أيوة. وبسرعه شديده اول ما بيلاقوا اي حاجه شكلها حتى ولو يعني يعني لا ترقى الا انها تكون دليل كامل على طول بتروح الموضوع بيتنشر الموضوع بيكبر بتتعمل بتتعمل متاحف بالامور دي بتدرس في المدارس وفي الجامعات السؤال هو احنا فين يعني احنا بنكلم بنكلم بعض احنا بنكلم بعض ازاي احنا نقدر ان احنا نكون بنرد يعني لانه انا النهارده دلوقتي لما باجي اتكلم مع حد انا كاني بتكلم هيروغليف صح. اللي انا بقوله اللي يقول لك انت انت فين من الماجوريتي كلها خلاص شايفه حاجه انت في حته ثانيه خالص صح فالفكره صح. انه 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 يعني احنا عندنا دلوقتي سورسز شكلها محترم وشكلها شكلها كويس جدا أيوة. انما انما يعني ليه ما بتدورش حلقات من النقاش مثلا او ليه ما بيطرحش الراي العام كان الامر ده قبل مثلا ما تتحط واحده زي حاجه زي العظام بتوع لوسي دول في متحف ويتعمل لها شكل وتصور كامل yeah. يعني يعني هل الناس دي هل هي يعني عايز اقول ايه من القوه انها تقدر تحط الامور بالشكل دوت دون ان هي حتى تتناقش علميا مع الراي الاخر ويصبح انه خلاص هو دوت الحقيقه ومش عايزين نسمع حد تاني بالظبط للاسف ليه اقول لك حاجه كل الابحاث وكل الفلوس رايحه ناحيه النشوء والارتقاء انا ليا صديق هنا كان بيعمل دكتوراه في البيولوجي في جامعه هنا في نيوكاسل في انجلترا ولما المشرف بتاعه عرف ان هو بيؤمن حتى مش بس بالخلق الكتابي هو كان بيؤمن بالانتليجنت ديزاين يعني ان في خالق وان في ما بيقولش ان هو ربنا رب يسوع وكده رفض يكمل له الرساله بتاعته اوكي اي واحد بس الحمد لله لقى واحد تاني وخلص اي واحد يقول ان انا بعمل ابحاث للخليقه كل الفندز اللي جايه له تقف طب وفين الامانه العلميه بقى؟ احنا بنتكلم انه في آه. حاجه دلوقتي المفروض انه يعني يعني انا النهارده بطرح الاكتشاف والاكتشاف ده آه. قبل ما حتى نتكلم فيه او قبل ما نوصل لدرجه اليقين من ان هو اكتشاف حقيقي خلاص بيتعمم الفكر انه خلاص لا هو اكتشاف حقيقي وخلينا ندرسه كمان اي برافو عليك صح دي المأساة عشان كده احنا بنعمل الاجتماعات دي وال لقاءات وبنكتب كتب وبنعمل الويب سايت وبنعمل الاونلاين ده وانا سهران للساعه 2 الصبح عشان اقول الكلام ده طبعا لانه لان الحكايه وجع قلب بعيد عنك يعني حاجه طبعا. صعبه جدا جدا طبعا عشان كده عايزين اجيال تتعلم الكلام ده مظبوط وتقدمه لمدارس الاحد وللكبار بس انا نصيحتي للشباب وهم بيسمعوا حاجات محاضرات زي كده هتلاقي حتى في الويب سايت بتاعي كاتب انا الكلام ده اني اقول لهم في الامتحان اكتبوا يقول علماء النشوء والارتقاء ورص اللي في الكتاب عشان تنجح. لكن انت يكون عندك القدره على التفكير. اللي حصل انه الكنيسه فضلت صامته اكثر من 200 سنه. دي ال 200 سنه اللي حصل فيهم النشوء والارتقاء والبيج بانج والكلام ده. لما الكنيسه ابتدت يعني الكرييشن موفمنت ابتدت تتحرك بشده في 1960 تقريبا. ايوه. عشان كده هي عمرها صغير مش كبير 50 60 سنه. فانت بت 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 بتهد حاجات اتبنت عبر مئات السنين. بتحاول تهدها دلوقتي. عشان كده احنا بنفتح هذا الحوار. وبالتاكيد هيكون قدامك مقاومه وبالتاكيد اللي بنى ده كله في السنين دي كلها مش هيخليك تشتغل انك تهدها لانه موضوع من الواضح انه بالزبط. يعني موضوع مترتب بطريقه من ابليس يعني بالظبط وبعدين الفلوس والمصادر وكده رايحه لهم تمام تمام فاحنا رب هي بص هي سبريتشوال باتل كمان لان هم عايزين ينفوا زي ما بديت المحاضره النهارده عايزين ينفوا ادم الاول لو نفيت ادم الاول كل حاجه هتقع بتوقع يعني الكتاب بتوقع الفكر كله بالظبط وهم كل الحكايه بيقول لك احنا جينا من من النشوء والارتقاء وجينا من الجد التخيلي الاعظم هو تخيلي ما عندناش حفريات ليه ايوه ايوه بالك حتى بس بالمنطق البسيط هو تخيلي هم بيقولوا عليه تخيل فاحنا فضلنا ساكتين الكنيسه ساكته تقول لك نقبل النشوء والارتقاء نقبل ملايين السنين نقبل اي حاجه عشان ما نبانش ان احنا متخلفين
بس لا وقبل 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 حاجات كتير الكنيسه الحقيقه كمان بالظبط يعني بالزبط. حاجه توجع القلب الحقيقه مش بالظبط ايوه بالظبط عشان كده ربنا يساعدكم يا احبه يعني انا حاطط المجهود ده معاكم علشان انا نفسي ان انتم تبقوا القاده اللي تغيروا في المكان اللي انتم فيه امين امين بس ده يحتاج انكم تدرسوا بدقه انا ربنا كان بيدربني في كده حوالي اكتر من 10 10 سنين أيوه. قبل ما وانا لسه بشتغل فول تايم سيرجن يعني كان بيدربني في الكلام ده و... و... وحبيته وحسيت باهميته و... ونفسي بقى انتم تاخدوا هذا الكلام وتطوروه وت... 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 وتولفوه على البيئه اللي انتم فيها وتقدموه. فعشان كده من فضلكم ارجعوا للمحاضرات تاني ابذلوا وقت انا عارف كلكم مشغولين وكل واحد عنده اهتمامات وكده لكن الموضوع خطير يا حبه يعني ف يعني شدوا حيلكم يعني تمام اي اسئله تاني دكتور استاذنك انا كان عندي سؤال في سلايد من حضرتك عرضتها بتاع الفورست اوف كريشن قبل ما نتكلم على الموضوع بتاع لوسي كنت محتاج اشوف السلايد عشان خاطر الهيومن بي احطها لك حاضر اجيبها لك دي اقدر اجيبها دي واحده رايت فين فين لا دي موجوده في برزنتيشن تاني اقدر اجيبها لك برضو دي واحده حاضر معلش انا اتاخرت في السؤال بتاعي وبعدين الموضوع بتاع لوسي وال حاطة آه. المفقودة كان شيخ فما رضتش اقطعه آه من الناحية لا لا قوي 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 دي واحدة ستوب لا شير انتوا كده شايفين السكرين بتاعتي؟ لا يا دكتور كده ال ستوب شايفين الكاميرا بتاعت حضرتك الويندو از كلوزد آه طب انا عايز اقول اوكي على دي وبعدين اعمل لك شير كده انتوا شايفين السكرين طيب بص دي طب اوكي دي واحده انا هحاول اجيبها آم. مش مشكلة لو حضرتك ما قدرتش النهارده انا هراجع الريكورد وهجيبها لك لا اه هجيبها لك آه انا ببعت السلايدز لباسم بكره فهتلاقيها بكره غالبا بكره مش عارف بالظبط هقدر بكره ولا بعده آه ببعتها هو بيحطها على الويب سايت بتاع الاكاديمي ف اوكي وانا هراجع الريكورد والسؤال اخلي لحضرتك للمره الجايه يا معلش انا هو عندي ثلاث اربع حاجات مفتوحه فمش عارف اوصل للسكرين اللي اقدر اجيب لك لا لا ما فيش اي مشاكل اوكي طيب اوكي يا دكتور ماشي ميرسي خالص يا حضرتك في اسئله ثانيه احبه؟ طيب بالنسبه للبرنامج زي ما قلت لكم انه من الاسبوع الجاي 